Let's say you're an archer with either a limited budget or you're new to archery. Which bow is gonna be best for you to get involved with this great sport? In my opinion, one of the best bangs for the buck out there is the Hoyt Power Max. This is an awesome bow that comes in at an MAP price at about $5.99. But for that price, you get a tremendous amount of features that Hoyt has been known for. So let's just talk about some of the basic features of this bow before we get it out on the range. First off, the riser is an alloy riser, so you have superior strength, and also you have the tech bridge design that all Hoyt bows are known for. From there, you have a composite limb pocket system that goes into a split limb, which has been bulletproof throughout the Hoyt history. And then you get into a PowerMax cam system that has a great speed of about 328 feet per second with an IBO speed rating. Now the great thing about this cam is that it's perfect for either entry level archers or beginners that need to probably have draw length adjustments as they get the basic understanding of archery form. This cam gives you the ability of adjustment between 25 and a half to 30 inches of draw length by simply moving the module in the peg without the need of a bow press. Now the other things that are packed into this little bow is going to be the fused strings and cables as well as a grip that's going to feel extremely comfortable as well as the stealth shot string suppressor. So you're going to have a very compact bow coming in at about 31 inches axle to axle that's extremely lightweight which is at about 3.8 pounds. If you're looking to get a great bow that's going to give you the ability to not only adjust the length but also the poundage and something that's going to give you the ability to transfer over from being a target archer into a bow hunter, the Power Max is the perfect bow for that segue. Now the next thing we're going to do is let's set this bow up and I'm going to get it out on the range and I'm going to show you just how accurate this Power Max is coming in at such an awesome price. All right, we're gonna do a speed round setup so I can get out and get this shot. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount my accessories on here. Uh, first being a knock on Elevate Rest. I'm gonna put a fuse torch stabilizer and I'm gonna just go ahead and put on one of my older Sherlock hunting sights. So pretty simple. Screwing on stabilizers. Mount my arrow rest. Down. I'm going to go ahead and eyeball this and make sure that it's perfectly level before I tighten it down and then tighten the set screw after just making sure everything's snug. From there I'm going to go ahead and tighten my limb clamp on my lower limb. I'm going to make sure that I've got this this notched out part, which is made to sit in the limb. I'm gonna make sure that that's, the limb is centered in that notched out part, just so that I don't pinch the limb on one of those corners. I'm also gonna move that limb clamp about even with the cam, just so that it's in a smaller section of the limb. So the limb's wide, pinches down, starts wide again, I'm going to get in that narrower spot. I'm going to tighten evenly on both sides. Do a turn or two, then a turn or two, until I get that nice and snug. Just check it for tightness. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my sight. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to Go ahead and take a piece of D-loop material. I've kind of lipped the end and I've pulled it tight into a point like that, which makes it easier to feed through the lower limb clamp. But what I'm gonna do is on the opposite end of that burn mark, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and tie a quick knot just like this. I then like to pull that knight that knot tight, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and fuzz that up.
I'm gonna go ahead and feed this through that hole, pull that tight. I'm just gonna temporarily pull this through here and not tighten this, but I will go ahead and tighten this down here. I'll go ahead and pull the slack out of the cord and tighten this down securely on to that D-loop cord. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and not tighten this. And this right here is a basic setup and we're about ready to go over to the bow press. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and adjust these cams for my draw length. Uh, I'm gonna have to let this out to the longest position just because of my draw length. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen these small screws by the letters. So I'm gonna loosen the first one there, second one there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that to the J position, which is the longest position. Obviously A would be the shortest. I'm gonna snug that down. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Whatever position you have your module in, whether it's A all the way to J, you have to set your peg in the exact matching hole. So I'm gonna move what was on H to the J position. Move into the bottom. So now we're in the longest position. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bow back just to get a feel for the cam synchronization. And it's actually dead on, perfect. If you're interested in looking at cam synchronization, go ahead and go to the Knock on Archery YouTube channel and you can type in John Dudley cam synchronization or cam timing. You'll be able to see that, which was part of a knocked and ready to rock segment. So now let's go ahead and move over here to the bow press. I'm gonna take a small piece of arrow. If you ever cut your arrows off and you wonder what to do with that little bit that's left, put a knock in it and use it for your bow setup. It's really good for just eyeballing and making sure that your arrow rest is kind of set to the right position. Um, so I'm just looking at this. Also checking my left and right position. This is set up really close. So I'm gonna be good with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this bow press for this bow. What I'm looking for here is making sure these rollers are gonna be pushing perfectly flat on the limbs themselves without pushing on either the axle, the bushings, the cam peg. So right here, we're in a perfect place. Everything's locked into position. I'm gonna use my little arrow as a guide for 90 degrees. Put a temporary little brass knock on there just to hold my placement. Then I'm gonna take my measurement for my peep sight, which for me, my peep sight runs an average of about six inches from the top of the knock to the peep position. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. Turn this bow press, slightly loosen the string, and I'm gonna install my peep sight into the string now. I'm gonna separate the, the strands on this string so that we have all the black strands on one side, all the silver on the other side. Go ahead and install my peep sight. Maintain tension on the string. And I'm just gonna double check this distance. Right there, we're perfect. Let this bow out of press. Just double check my arrow position one more time. 
looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tie my knock sets. Since I'm using this little brass knock as a temporary, I can tie my bottom knock first and then do my top knock uh, after I remove it. Uh, if by chance this peep would have not been in the correct position, which right now it's actually in a great position, it's pointing straight back. So once I tie this in, it'll be perfect. If by chance the peep wasn't in the correct position and I was gonna have to add twists to the string to get it in the correct position, I would do that before I actually tie on my loop set. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this 3D material um, which we sell at knockonarchery.com. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a few feet of that out and just go ahead and get you about two or three feet, depending on how much you wanna work with to tie your loop sets. I'm gonna go ahead and tie, or my knock sets, I'm gonna go ahead and tie these knock sets. I'll burn those down. Remove the brass knock, my temporary. So I've removed that top knocking point, the temporary one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tie in a tied top knock. I'm gonna check my knock fit. That's perfect. There's about a half a millimeter there, which is perfect by the time it gets to 30 inches of draw that small gap will actually be taken out of that. Now, for the purpose of doing a bow review, I'm not gonna give this thing the, the platinum bow build. This is a quick build to get out and show you what this thing's doing downrange. It's probably very, very similar to the type of setup that you would get in an archery shop where they're gonna put in a peep sight, tie a, um, a loop on there, possibly tied knock set, tie your peep in, and you know, get you set up, especially if you're a beginner, get you set up with you know a stabilizer, a sight, an arrow rest, and a peep sight. And from there, you're just gonna select the type of arrows that fit your budget, and you're gonna be on your way to shooting. We're gonna do the exact same thing for our peep sight because you don't ever wanna not have that peep tied in because that peep is actually, if it ever comes out of that string, it'll be a shooting projectile. So make sure your peep sights are always tied in. It, it's quick to do, 100% worth keeping your eyesight for. Go ahead and do a quick tied peep set here. Last knot, I went between rows. Now what I do is I take a piece of D-loop material, just slide that knot up tight. Once I've tightened it down on the small part, I'll go ahead and move it up there like that. Looks great. Now I'm gonna finish with my D-loop. So D-loop is gonna be really simple. Uh, get rid of my little arrow stub now. Make a J my side of the string on the top, just because I am a right-handed shooter. I'm gonna feed that J th back through itself. Pull it down to the knock sets. Pull the long end snug. Pull the short end under the long end. I'm gonna smash it flat right here. I'm gonna slightly move that around. Pull that slack out of the bottom. And then I'm gonna cut the bottom, fuzz it. Go ahead and pull some of that slack out of the long end. Get it to the position that I want. Pull a little more slack out. Now I'm gonna cross over to the back of the string, get my loop length that I would like, feed it through. 
come over to myself underneath back through now I'm going to repeat the process smash it flat pull the slack out trim it off close it up Now we're going to set the loop so it's centered with the peep. Once it's centered with the peep, we can put the needle nose in, cinch it down, and that's perfectly ready to go. Now we're going to get our arrows, make one final adjustment on the arrow rest, cinch it down, and we're going to be ready to shoot. All right, I got my arrow rest on there. So I actually look over the top of that arrow rest, just eyeballing this right now. My arrow is a little bit inside of, if I line my string down my tiller bolts, it's a little bit inside. So I'm gonna move my arrow rest a little bit out. I'm also just a little bit high on my knocking point. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my arrow rest up and then I'm gonna be golden. So I'm gonna loosen my left and right. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the left. Eyeball it right there. Right on. Perfect. So I'm going to give it maybe just a fuzz more. Tighten down my left and right. And I'm going to look at my highs and lows. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly adjust my up and down, loosen that, use my micro adjust underneath to raise that arrow rest up. Okay, right there is right where I want it, 90 degrees. Cinch that down, look over the top one more time, that's good. High and low is good. So now I'm simply going to put my Allen wrench right here in the side, pull my arrow rest down. Remove the slack out of the cord and tighten down that set screw all the way. You'll see over on this side, my arrow rest is going flat to the riser and my arrow containment cage is bumped up right to the bottom of that blade as a support. So once I trim this off right here, to the length that I want for extra. I normally leave just a little bit extra. You can take that little bit extra and tie it around just like that. And we're literally about ready to go in the backyard. The last thing I do is I'm just gonna make a final adjustment to the string stop. I don't like to have too much pressure on the string stop. So I actually am gonna loosen it up just tip it down, just tap the bow lightly till it naturally falls on the string. I'm gonna center it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and snug it down. And just like that, this bow is ready to go outside and shoot. So let's, uh, Let's put it through the paper really quick, then let's get outside and see what this thing will do on the range. All right, we're out here mopping dew. Got the 3D range set. We're getting ready to put this Power Max to the real test. That's how does it grow. This is a brand new site. I'm just working on literally getting our gaps. So I'm just slowly walking back, checking my left to right alignment. I usually just go right for the gusto. If it pounds them at 100, I know it'll pound them everywhere else. Keep shooting, keep breathing. 
This is the Grizzly at 100. I can just see that kill zone right there. hard hitter. Well, that's a wrap. Hoyt Power Max is definitely two thumbs up. For the price, you just can't get better features. And several years ago, we would have all been totally happy with a bow like this for a flagship bow for any company. But as advancements happen, those advancements cost money. But it's nice to still be able to have something that comes in for the archer that just either wants to get into archery for the first time, has a limited budget, or really wants to focus on investing in high quality accessories to go along with your bow. That's one of the things that I didn't talk about earlier, but it's one of the most critical elements because regardless of how expensive your bow is, it's only as good as the accessories that you surround it with. So if you can't have a high quality arrow rest, if you can't have arrows that have great straightness, if you have a sight that's made out of plastic and moves all the time, all those little things add up to just taking away from accuracy out of this setup. But coming in at the price that this comes in at, we've had great speed, hits hard. I mean, for me to be out here with a, a large diameter peep sight, a fixed pin sight, and shoot these kinds of groups, I just couldn't be happier. I haven't spent a tremendous amount of time, you know, really honing these arrows in to match this particular bow, but to have this thing out here shooting within an hour's time from when we first set it up, I couldn't be happier. Hoyt Power Max, available in any Hoyt retailer, and just an awesome package for the price.